In this video lecture, we will be discussing one more very important topic of discrete Fourier transform, that is Parsifal's theorem. So basically, if x1n and x2n are the two arbitrary discrete time sequences, then Parsifal's theorem states that if dft of x1n is x1k and dft of x2n is x2k, then summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1, x1n dot x2 conjugate n will be equal to 1 upon n, summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1, capital X1k dot capital X2 conjugate k. Now, now if X1n and X2n will be equal to X of n, then the above expression will be reduces to summation n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1, mod of X of n square will be equal to summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1, mod of X of k square. 1 upon n. So basically, this is the formula of energy which we discussed already in the signals and system class. So here in this video lecture, we will prove both these statements. This is my first statement and this is my second statement. So we will first prove this particular theorem from LHS to RHS. So let us write down the LHS expression and that is summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 x1 n dot x2 conjugate n. So we know from the IDFT formula that x1 n can be written as 1 upon n summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1. capital X1K e to the power plus j 2 pi k n upon capital N. So this is the expression for IDFT. Now putting this expression in this equation, it can be written as summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1, 1 upon n summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 capital X1K e to the power plus j 2 pi k n upon capital N dot X2 conjugate n. Now interchanging the position of summation and it can be written as summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 keeping 1 by n outside the summation capital X1K dot summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 X2 conjugate n e to the power plus j 2 pi k n upon capital N which is 1 upon n summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 capital X1K under the square bracket we can write summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 X2N dot e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital N whole conjugate. So this we discussed in our earlier lecture where e to the power plus j 2 pi k n conjugate is always equal to e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital N. So this can be written as 1 upon n summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 capital X1 k under the bracket X2 k whole conjugate which is 1 upon n summation k is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 x1 k x2 conjugate k which is the RHS of my statement. Hence it is proved. 
Now let us prove the same theorem from RHS to LHS. So my RHS statement is. One upon n summation k is equal to zero to capital n minus one x one k x two conjugate k. Now here we will write down the formula of DFT for x one k. So x one k can be written as summation n is equal to zero to capital n minus one. x1 n e to the power minus j 2 pi k n upon capital n. Now putting the value of x1 k in this expression, and it can be written as 1 upon n summation k is equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 summation n is equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 x1 n e to the power Minus j, two pi, k n upon capital n, dot, x two star, or x two conjugate, k. So interchanging the position of summation, and it can be written as summation, n is equal to zero to capital n minus one, x one n, one upon n, summation. K is equal to zero to capital n minus one. X two conjugate k e to the power minus j two pi k n upon capital n. So this can be written as summation n is equal to zero to capital n minus one. X one n within a square bracket we can write one upon n. Summation k is equal to zero to capital n minus one x two k e to the power plus j two pi k n upon capital n whole conjugate because we know that e to the power minus j two pi k n On capital N conjugate will always be equal to e to the power plus j two pi k n upon capital N. So finally, we can write summation n is equal to zero to capital N minus one x one n. This is the formula of IDFT. So we can write. X two n conjugate. That is summation n is equal to zero to capital n minus one x one n dot x two conjugate n, which is the LHS of my expression. Hence, it is proved. So, in this way, we can prove the Parsevals theorem of discrete Fourier transform. Now, what happens if x one n is equal to x two n will be equal to a new discrete time sequence that is x of n? So, the above expression reduces to summation n is equal to zero to capital n minus one x of n dot X conjugate n, which is equal to one upon n summation k is equal to zero to capital n minus one x of k x conjugate k, and we know that x of n multiplied with its conjugate will always be equal to. Summation n is equal to zero to capital n minus one mod of x of n square and 
equal to 1 upon n summation k is equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 mod of x of k square this is the energy of a discrete time sequence in time domain and this is the energy of a discrete time sequence in frequency domain so this particular expression always helps in solving numericals so this is a very important expression which you need to be remember in discrete Fourier transform so this is all about today's session thank you